Hello, this is Alex Eames from raspi.tv. Those were people who had been using Plan 9 for 20 years but had never heard of Raspberry Pi. So, um, assuming you've never heard of Plan 9. No, I have heard of it, I'm not sure. Is it an operating system? It is an operating yeah. system. But I'm assuming you're pretty familiar with Raspberry Pi, so I won't say anything about that. Um, how many people have ever compiled their own kernel? Uh, I've tried. <laughs> so I can see the sophistication of <laughs> the audience. Not very successful. Uh, how many people enjoyed it? <laughs> I haven't got a server handy, so I'll boot from that's the default the local and give my user ID and it IP config looks for a, an IP address and we're up. So the first thing to say about Plan 9 is it's very minimalist. Mm -hmm. This is this is the desktop. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Plan 9 is really designed by software engineers for software engineers who want to get their work done, writing programs, testing programs, building software, writing documentation. They don't want to be distracted by, by Dis Walt Disney uh, fancy movie effects. So it's, it's a racing car rather than a, than a Rolls Royce. So the first thing we need is a terminal window to get any work done. That's how you make one. Um, right click. You really, really, really want a three button mouse to use Plan 9 because each button has, has its own um, purpose. By the way, how long have I got? Cause as I long could, as you want. I could spend hours. But <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll stick to the most interesting bits. So right click on the desktop, you can, uh, you can get a little menu up to create a new window. You can resize an existing window. Um, you can move windows, hello, move windows around. Um, you can hide a window, you can bring it back again, and that's about it for that menu. Notice there's no decorations on Windows. You don't need a title bar and fancy buttons because you can do everything you need from, from that menu. Um, let's get something in the window. People who are used to the Unix or Linux command line um, will find this quite familiar. So here's a list of all the commands. Scrolls reasonably quickly. Um, so within a window, there's uh, another menu. Uh, well, I'm not going to. Most of the time, I spend misspelling things in this little environment called Acme, which is a sort of window manager, editor, programming environment, um, all in one. Um, Inspired by the Roadrunner cartoons, I presume. The, yeah, the names the names are kind of funny. <laughs> uh, the one interesting thing about Plan 9 is it doesn't have menus as such. Any bit of text can act as a menu. So I can click here on New Call and it makes a new column. Click on Delete and it deletes. But if I type New Call over here and middle click on that one, it does the same thing. So any text anywhere is executable with, with the middle button. What's that Japanese looking script on the right hand um, side? Well, one of the things, anybody heard of UTF-8? Yeah. Hmm. It's a representation of Unicode in 8-bit characters. Mm -hmm. That was invented to go with Plan 9. Mm -hmm. Plan 9 uses UTF-8 very extensively. Um, it treats, it treats um, the full UTF character set just as easily as you do ordinary ASCII. So uh, this is a file name uh, which happens to be Japanese. Mm -hmm. It's got some Japanese and uh, Latin text in it. If we wanted to um, search for some Japanese characters, um, it's hard to type them, but you can cut and paste them. So we search for this character in all the files in the current directory, and there it's found one. <laughs> um, so that's just a little, little bit of showing off. So 
if you right click on the name of the directory it opens that directory so this becomes a sort of file explorer um, <coughs> their software engineers do with their time. Let's create a new file, call it, give it a name. This mouse keeps wanting to move. A little bit of boilerplate that every command, every program has. seen this program. This is the Plan 9 version of it. You might have, if you're very observant, noticed I'm actually c using chords on the mouse, pressing two buttons at once. If you click, if you double click with the left button inside a bracket, it selects everything up to the matching bracket. If you hold down button one and press button two, it cuts out what's selected. Holding down button one, press button three, it pastes it. So if you want to move stuff around, cut, paste, paste, paste. It's, uh, it's very quick. Mm. Okay. So there's a complete program. Save it. I've got a little make file. That's my make file. So this is a little bit of boilerplate which magically makes any <coughs> command. It's got, it includes rules for object type is, happens to be ARM because I'm running on an ARM make. I can execute it by, I need the word hello somewhere. There it is. Middle click. There is the output of the program. So, all the communication between here and my home machine is encrypted. Um, so, if somebody at RS is um, eavesdropping on the Ethernet, <laughs> it doesn't bother me. Yeah, yeah. So, they're probably asking, they're yeah, in the yeah. bushes outside, <laughs> <laughs> sniffed up that Wi Fi network. <laughs> <laughs> so this window is in North Oxford, this window is here. So if I look at the contents of my home directory here, it's not got much in it. If I look at that one. But there's another way to link computers together, and that is by having a distributed network of file systems. So if we say I've got happen to have a Plan 9 server sitting in an Amazon EC2 virtual machine off in the cloud somewhere. I think it may be Ireland, but I don't know for sure. Again, we need a password to get at that one. Now, what I've just done, 9FS connects a Plan 9 file system from this server and calls it slash n EC2. So if I do an ls on n EC2, what I'm looking at now is the root of the file system on that remote server in the cloud. Um, that looks far more organized, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just use it for testing. I haven't got any real work on there. <coughs> Some source. There's a portable directory which has most of the operating system 
which is exactly the same on every machine. Um, we've got uh, PowerPC, we've got OMAP, we've got Kirkwood. Um, those are the non-portable parts for, for specific architectures. Yeah. So Broadcom is all the port all the non-portable code for Raspberry Pi Plan 9. So let's see how much there is. So who's written all that? Do you know? Me. Oh, you. So you've done the Pi port? So, yeah. Thank you very much. So <laughs> this is it. 7,000 lines. Well, some of it's borrowed from yeah. similar art machines. Yeah. But basically, this is this is the sum total of what's specific to ARM. To, sorry, what's specific to Raspberry Pi? Mm -hmm. yeah. All the commands, everything else outside this directory is is absolutely for a standard. How long does it take you to do that then? Um, I got my Pi in July, and right. I've been doing it sort of half time right. since then. So a couple of months full time. Um, so what license is that under then? It's a Lucent's own, Lucent Bell Labs own license, right, okay. which is very like the BSD license. Right. It's not it's not an infectious license like GPL. Okay. Um, and when you download it, you get all the source right. for the mm -hmm. operating system and all the commands. Those. Well, 5C is the ARM C compiler. The x86 compiler is called 8C. Uh, the the Spark C compiler is called QC. You see the pattern. <laughs> yeah. You're definitely doing that on the Pi. Are you not in the cloud? Or? Definitely doing it on right. Pi. Yeah. I can go off and do it on the cloud as well. You <laughs> 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 can have a race. <laughs> This is the big part of the job is there's a few commands built into the kernel that it uses to configure and load up the file system. Um, so it's actually taking the binary of those built-in commands, turning them into an assembly language program and then assembling them in order to get the binary built as part of the kernel. It's a bit inefficient. Right, it's done all the compiles. Um, it's doing the link stage. Almost done. It actually links the kernel twice. Once th to give you the one that it executes, and once to give you an extra one with symbols, symbol table for debugging. Right, it's done. So was that about one minute? Uh, about one minute. Amazing. Um, yeah, How long does it take to do a Linux one for? Those of us that haven't done it before. Days? I don't know. No, no, no. A couple of hours. Has anybody ever done it on, on the Raspberry Pi? No, not on the Raspberry Pi. No. Not, as, not as quick as that, that's for sure. Though. Right. I've that's actually amazing. done the experiment of recompiling the, the whole of Plan 9, all the 500 plus commands and 43 odd uh, libraries from completely from scratch on the Raspberry Pi. It takes about 50 minutes on an SD card or using a remote file server it takes about 40 minutes. Mm. This was Alex Eames for Raspi.tv. Thank you for watching.